Hey guys, it is snowing now. It's spinning some snow. It's just really cold, but it's cool. So I am here in front of the Jenny Wade house. And if you don't know who she is, she was the only civilian killed in the Civil War. You probably saw this house and this statue on shows like uh, Ghost Lab, Ghost Adventures, because they've done paranormal investigations in here, because it's said that this is haunted by her and others. There she is, there's Jenny Wade. We might see more of her later. On the morning of July 1st, Gettysburg resident Jenny Wade and her family fled their town home to this brick double house shared by her sister, Georgia McClellan, to distance themselves from the fighting. The Union retreat to Cemetery Hill soon placed Jenny and the rest of the household in direct path of the danger. Despite the menace of stray bullets that constantly struck the house walls, Jenny busied herself furnishing water and baking biscuits for the many soldiers manning this nearby Union picket line. Early on the morning of July 3rd, fate claimed Gettysburg's only civilian fatality. Jenny was killed instantly by a random Confederate bullet while preparing biscuit dough in the kitchen. Her mother saw her fall and sadly informed the rest of the family, your sister is dead. So there's poor Jenny. I don't think it matters anymore. So I think that photo we took outside is probably the one that got her. Okay, legend has it that if an unmarried girl puts her ring finger through the bullet hole in this door, she will receive a proposal of marriage within one year. You're not superstitious. Neither were some others, but it has happened. We get letters. <laughs> That's the one that bullet that got her there. So let's see, it came in. It came in this way and came through that way too. I think a bunch of them went upstairs. Oh, sorry. That is a really cool. cool. Uh, up there, that is a burn up photo of Jenny Wade. Uh, the only known photo of Jenny Wade is back there on the wall. Jenny is on the right, and her sister Georgia is on the left. And that is Mrs. Wade's around. friend of uh, Mrs. Wade's mom's friend, which is Mar uh, Marie Comfort in the middle. So she's the oldest one out of. Jenny and Georgia. And then that people are not a lot of stuff happened in here. Now, Jenny was on the love seat, and of course, Georgia was on the bed here with a newborn baby. But I will tell you more about that when we get into the kitchen. I just like to go over that. But the corner. I, I noticed how everyone just like sees <laughs> 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 right there. Okay. Um, I, uh, I try to stay away from the corner because I don't like the corner. Um, but something happened to my manager, Joe, back in 2001. He became the new manager in February of that year. And he decides to take everything out of here and put it into the kitchen, except for the bed there, because it wouldn't fit through this doorway. He puts the bed in the center of the room and put wrapping over it. That way it wouldn't get ruined because he's going to paint the ceilings. So he starts in this corner, and he goes around, and then he goes to this corner, and then a couple of hours go by, and suddenly he looks up at that lantern right there because he's getting close to it, and he realizes that he forgot to take that globe off the lantern. So he takes that globe and he places it on the mantelpiece right there. He's like, I don't feel like walking all the way into the kitchen. I'm just going to, you know, get it when I leave. So he keeps on painting. Hours and hours go by. He slowly starts to get into this corner and it starts to get dark out, and he's getting hungry. So he's like, okay, it's quitting time. So he puts all the paint and stuff down in that corner, and he decides to, you know, leave, lock up, turn off all the lights. It's February, it's the off season. We don't do tours during the off season, so there was nobody in here. So, 
the next morning comes. He forgot to put that globe in the kitchen with the rest of the stuff. He left that globe on my mantelpiece the entire night. No one was in here. Comes in the next morning, turns on the lights, <coughs> starts painting again. Doesn't even remember about the globe. So he's painting and painting. Hours go by again. Something catches his attention up at the lantern. That's what he says. So he just glances up there, and then he's like, he remembers, like a light bulb went off. The globe! The globe, I put it on the, the mantle, the mantelpiece. He's like, where's the globe? He was looking for the globe. Guess where he found that globe, which I think is a very interesting now. Back in that corner, shattered glass all over the floor. Of course, mm. now Joe, he didn't see that because he wasn't in that corner that day. <clears throat> He, the bed was, you know, in the middle there. He didn't really see it because he was on this side. That's about 15 feet away from the mantelpiece right there. I don't understand how that could happen. There was nobody in here. I don't know if that... But she wasn't reading about anything happy. She was reading about death. <coughs> sadness. Now, Georgia on the bed didn't like that at all. Georgia was getting upset. Because, of course, newborn baby and Lewis was in the war. So, Mrs. Wade's in here poking the fire. And Georgia yells to Mrs. Wade, Mom, 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 make Jenny stop. I'm getting upset. So Mrs. Wade turns around. And before Mrs. Wade could say anything to Jenny, Jenny closes her Bible and sits it next to her and says, If anyone must die today, may it be me. Ooh. She says those exact words. We have it written down from Georgia that she said those words. Now, that's unfortunate to me and eerie that she said those words because... Yep, yeah, yeah, Jenny did die. Jenny gets up off the love seat. She comes in here, and she starts baking bread over this original dough trough. Original one that she's baking bread over on July 3rd, 1863. So, Georgia, or Jenny, she's really short. She's 5'1". She's coming in here. Mrs. Wade turns around. And it's like, Jenny, Jenny, you gotta get down low. The bullets, they're coming in high. They're coming through the door there. You gotta get down low. So, Jenny's like, okay, okay. She's down basically like this, baking bread for the Union soldiers. Now, Mrs. Wade, Mrs. Wade's like, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm gonna give you one second. Mrs. Wade puts the door just like that. Thinking it would protect her. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I always say I really don't know what Mrs. Wade was thinking. Slow it down. Maybe it wouldn't go through. Unfortunately not. The bullet, it came through that door right there, that bullet hole that I showed you guys outside. Came through this door right here, this bullet hole. And since Jenny was down low, that was the downfall. That was. Wow. It hit Jenny, yep, right through the shoulder blade. And it actually pierced her heart. She died instantly. And it got lodged in there because... She was wearing her corset. Oh. So, Jenny falls to the floor. Mrs. Wade turns around and sees that Jenny has fallen, but she doesn't think anything of it. Because the day before, on July 2nd, 1863, a 10 pound parrot shell hit the house. It hit the rooms above through this, through this, through this wall right here and landed <coughs> actually on the McLean side. Went through this wall and the main wall upstairs. The McLeans, they weren't here. They actually left before the battle started. Good thing they did. But, thank goodness, also, that that 10-pound parrot shell, it didn't explode. It was a dud. So it landed over there. But the impact of that parrot shell hitting the, the wall right here, it made Jenny faint the day before. So oh. that's what Mrs. Wade thought again, unfortunately. So Mrs. Wade, she's like, oh, Jenny. She gets down, and then she turns Jenny over. Then she realizes that Jenny didn't faint. Jenny is dead. Mrs. Wade gets up. She goes into the parlor, and she tells Georgia her sister is dead. Now, Georgia, she's not as calm as Mrs. Wade. Georgia starts screaming <coughs> and yelling. And I told you, those two <coughs> soldiers that were out there in that, they dug that 
trench right there, right around the side. They hear Georgia. They come through this door, and they see Jenny on the floor. They're not used to seeing women of 20 years old die. They're used to seeing men and boys on the battlefield. Oh, that's the other people. Scare me. Oh, you got to turn the... So, they realize that the family's not safe. they got to get them out of here. But they can't go through this door. They can't get to their cellar. They gotta go someplace else. Mrs. Wade's like a 10 pound pear shell. It hit the day before. It made a hole through the wall. We can go to the other side and the McLean's aren't home. We can go to their cellar. Great idea. Now, everyone goes upstairs and those two Union soldiers, they go first and they pound a hole big enough with the back of their guns through this wall that way everyone can get through. Mrs. Wade's still down here. The two Union soldiers, they come back down because Mrs. Wade tells them she is not leaving without her daughter. They come back down, wrap Jenny in a sheet, and they carry her up those stairs. And that's where we will continue the tour. You guys see those cards on that table right there? Yeah. During Halloween, of course it was a month ago, we do like two tours of the guides because it's so busy. So, two weeks ago, about three, I had a tour on Saturday. Two tours, one at 6.15 and one at 9.15. I will tell you right now, honestly, those cars right there have not been touched in months. We keep them up here because the orphans, they like to fly with. Exactly. So, I did my tour at 6.15, came through the house. The cards were just like that. I do my tour at 9.15. I always look at those cards all the time. I tell you right now, the cards were spread across the entire table. They were all messed up. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. I was like, but first, I have to make sure there wasn't another tour. Because if there was another tour, I don't know. So, I go through the house. Everyone follows me out because they're, they're so, they're like, I wonder if there was another tour. Maria, she's also the tour guide. She would be the only one because she would do an encounter tour during mine. So, I go out and I find Maria. I'm like, Maria, did you touch those cards upstairs? Because they were all around the table. And she's like, nope, I didn't have a tour. You're the only one doing the Jenny Wade house tonight. And those cards haven't been touched in months. Because we want to see if it's going to happen again. But it's so cool. This is where the show came through. There's a lot of investigation groups in Gettysburg. And one night, this was years ago, they were doing an investigation. And of course, they had the lights off. They had a black light. So they're going through, and right around here, with the black light, they see a big spot, and it looks like a big spot of blood. Exactly. The guides, we really want to do this, because I really want to find out if that's really there. We think, of course, that maybe the two Union soldiers, they would put Jenny, Wade, Jenny Wade's body down right there. One Union soldier would go through the hole, while the other one would help. God. carry Jenny's body for just go through that because they wouldn't do that they wouldn't ask Georgia or Mrs. Wade to do it as well and they're just doing like a little investigation themselves so they're coming in and she brought something on the investigation with her it's just her and Joe they're stopped at that doorway right there and she's like Joe we can't go in this room and then Joe's like why can't we go in this room and then she's like because there are two orphans in this room. Can't go in this room. Her name's Kathy Curtis. I forgot the name. I was like, what is it? The Kathy Curtis. She's a renowned medium in Gettysburg. In this house, you'll get like blue or green orbs. It's really, really weird. <clears throat> now, over in the orphanage, you really only get the big ball of white orb or downstairs in the cellar. When we go downstairs, you get the big white orb as well. But here, up here is like the blue green orb. I don't know why. It's so strange. If you guys take photos and you see something that looks like blue green orb, it's something I explained. We're going down to Jenny White's cellar, and it's very still. I'm going to drop my spirit box. <laughs> I'm banging it on the door of the other side. Okay, yes.
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just now noticed that's supposed to be her lane there, right? Oh, this is not creepy at all. That's supposed to be Jenny Wade laying there. Like they said, she was only five foot one, so very short. I'm five, two or three. They find a coffin down north a little ways. Now, the coffin was owned by a Confederate general. He brought this coffin to the Battle of Gettysburg because he thought he was going to die. He had like an eerie feeling. So he had a coffin made and brought to the battle. Guess what? That Confederate general, he didn't die during the Battle of Gettysburg. He survived. The Confederates, they retreated north up through the mountains and then back down south. So that's how that coffin was down north. Maybe that Confederate general had an eerie feeling or premonition. Maybe he had a feeling that it wasn't for him, for Jenny. I don't know. Just strange how stuff like that works out. But those two Union soldiers found that coffin, brought it up to those cellar doors, placed Jenny Wade's body in that coffin, and the first time Jenny Wade was buried was behind this wall right here, in the trench, in the garden. That was the first time Jenny Wade was buried. Months and months go by. It actually wasn't until the end of October until they almost got most of the bodies buried from the Battle of Gettysburg. That's how many bodies, that's how bad it was. Now after that, they realized that that's not a proper burial for Jenny. She needs something better. She was the only civilian killed during the Battle of Gettysburg. So they unbury Jenny. Second time Jenny Wade was buried was a Methodist Reformed Church, which was down two roads from here. Very nice plot, you know, it was simple, but nice. And Jenny Wade was buried there the second time. I told you, the family after that, they move out to Iowa, they move out west, except for Mrs. Wade. Mrs. Wade stays here in Gettysburg. I guess to be closer to Jenny too, since Jenny is here, she didn't want to move out west. So years and years and years go by. The family, they start saving up money because they decide they want to buy Jenny a better plot. Jenny is moved a third time. Oh this gosh. poor girl, I tell you, I really feel sorry for her. That's asking for spirit activity right I know, right? right? I know, right? <laughs> but the third time she was married, since the family saved up so much money, it's a very nice burial. She is buried in Evergreen Cemetery. Now, Evergreen Cemetery was established in 1854 before the Battle of Gettysburg, and it's the oldest cemetery in Gettysburg. And that back there, that picture, that is Jenny Wade, and that is her plot, and that is her statue of her baking bread for the Union soldiers at Evergreen Cemetery. And that flag beside her grave flies 24-7 with no light. Now, there's only one other woman in history that has that honor of that flag flying 24 seven beside their gravestone with no light. Jenny Wade, and can anyone tell me the other woman? Betsy Ross, Ross. Betsy yeah, Ross. Betsy Ross. 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 Ross.
Thank <laughs> you. 